Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make the inside and outside of your supermarket. This video goes hand in hand with my actual supermarket tutorial that will show you how to make this building right here. Because obviously, I'm sure that you guys can already figure out, if you haven't made the supermarket itself, how can you make the inside and outside of it? If you haven't, don't worry. Head into either the card system or the description below and you will find a link that will show you a tutorial that will show you how to make this building right here. It will take you anywhere between half an hour and 45 minutes and once you've done that you can come back and you can follow this tutorial with the rest of us. Remember that tutorial is in the card system and the description below but let's actually talk about how we're going to improve our Tesco's or whatever you have named your supermarket. So to begin with, we're going to need some red carpet, some jungle leaves, some cauldrons, some stone brick stairs, some iron bars, some stone slabs, some oak wood fence, some item frames, and some books. Plus, we need every single one of those materials that you see in the inventory right there. And I can already tell you now, we're going to need loads more stuff later on as well. But you might want to pause this video, grab everything that you see. Once you've got it all, you can then progress on to this next bit. So, the first thing we're going to do with all of these materials is we are going to take care of the little lobby here before we actually enter the store. So, we're going to start off by placing a cauldron either side of the outer entrances into to the supermarket we're going to place a cauldron either side on the inside here and we're going to place a jungle leaf on top of the cauldron these are supposed to simulate potted plants and i think they look quite nice i like them use any variation that you like plus i'm also going to add a little bit of a rug to the inside as well just to cover up a little bit of the stone and make the place look a little bit nicer yeah i think that that definitely looks a little bit nicer don't you wonderful so, moving on in here, what we're now going to do is, you know with supermarkets, how they have those things that stop you stealing, how they have those, like, big, giant, metal-detecting tag thingy machines? Well, we're going to create those, and they look like this. So, they're basically a stonebrick stairs, a normal one, with an upside-down one stacked on top, kind of like forming the letter C. They are in line with the inside of the actual main door of the Tesco or the supermarket, and they're one block away. They look like that. And we want to place iron bars on the outside of them, like this. So, that's like the detector machine that stops anybody from um, taking anything with, uh, with like a tag on it outside. And uh, we want two of them. We want one on the left-hand side and one on the right, because of course they work in conjunction with each other. And they're just right there. They look exactly like that. I think that they look pretty good, and it adds a more authentic feel to your supermarket. So take care of that once you've got that taken care of we can now move on to the next thing so here's the next thing where we have this window on the front left hand side where we have this quartz block on the like this part of the window the part closest to the entrance we want to count in and we want to leave a gap of two on the floor so that's one and two leave a gap of two then place a stone slab like this so leave a gap of two stone slab then leaving another gap of two place another stone slab like that in that position right what you then want to do is on top of these stone slabs, you want to place two oak wood fence, like this. And I know, they don't connect down to the ground, but they're not supposed to. Then place item frames going all the way around your, uh, your two oak fence in a fashion that none of the item frames ever touch each other. So just place them going around in a fashion that none of the item frames actually ever touch each other, like that. Then place books in the item frame. So you know those like magazine racks that you see in like shops and supermarkets and places that sell, well, magazines and books and stuff? Well, that's what these are. They're just like normal racks that, uh, that you'd like spin around and you can grab books and whatever else they have on there off of them. It's, it's as simple as that. That's all those are. On this back wall where we have this window here, so from this corner block, right? with this window, we want to count in the ground and we want to find the second oak wood plank block coming in. So that's the first oak wood plank, this is the second oak wood plank. Coming up from the second oak wood plank, and I'm going to grab some new materials now, I'm going to grab like dark oak wood slabs, dark oak wood uh, stairs, bookshelves, spruce wood planks, birch wood stairs, birch wood slabs, chests, armor stands, and some wooden trapdoors. And on top of this block, I'm going to place 
a dark oak wood plank. So I've got to use two slabs for this. One and two, that's a plank. Then I'm going to place a dark oak wood stair. Then I'm going to go right of this stair by four with the bookshelf. So that's one, two, three, four. Then I want to place a dark oak wood stair. And underneath that, a dark oak wood plank. Again, two slabs, same thing. Then I'm going to place a row of dark oak wood slabs on top of this. And underneath the uh, underneath the books, I'm going to place uh, some just birch wood slabs. Um, any slabs will do. And if you like, what you can do is you can place some like wooden trap doors underneath this, if you want there to seem as though there's more going on. Plus, uh, something else you can do is if you want to just add little details like this, it's it's kind of fine. Like just add like buttons left and right of this. Again, it it just adds a little bit of detail that wasn't there previously. But what we want to do to these books, or maybe not, because we we kind of don't have to. If you wanted to, I did this in the original, you could put item frames with books in front of the books. But you don't have to do that by any means. I, I kind of like that as it is actually, instead of like having this effect that we have here. But do anything you like. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, leaving a gap of one, going towards the back of the supermarket here, leaving a gap of one between the end of this bookcase and um, what we're going to be building now, we want to start in the ground and we want to place a birch wood plank. Again, two slabs equals one plank. So we want to place that plank. And then we want to place a birch wood stairs. Then leaving a gap of two going right from the stairs, you want to place another stairs. Leave a gap of two going right, another stairs. Leave a gap of two and another one. Leave a gap of two, and there you go. So, you want to have something which should look like that. You should have, in total, five stairs coming out of the wall, right? We then want to place um, birch wood planks underneath each one of these birch wood stairs, like this. And you can also place another plank in front of them. So, another plank in front of the plank, only one. I'm being a bit silly, you don't want to do two planks. Another plank in front of the planks. And then, if you like, you can also extend um, the birch wood stair out in front with your birch wood slab. So, like this. So, you want to have something that should look a little bit like that. What we're now going to do is, in between these spaces that we have, we're going to place chests, a double chest, in between each one of these spaces at the bottom, like that. Then, behind those chests, we're going to place spruce wood planks, like so. And we're going to place wooden trap doors in front of the birch wood planks in between the chests, like so. And also, if you like, again, it's, it's all about little small details. You can add some, like, oak wood fence on top of the stairs that we have at the back here. And that will actually just about cover it. Um, later on, we'll do this in a bit because we need loads of materials for it. We're going to fill that up with, like, pumpkins, melons, all sorts of different foods and stuff. But those are basically stands that you that you just grab food off of. You guys will know what I'm talking about. I'm going to throw away the fence. I'm going to throw... And I'm going to grab out the dark oak wood slabs again. So... What we want to do now, okay, so what we can actually do is, from this left-hand side of the chest, we want to leave a gap of three on the floor. So that's one, two, three. And then on this fourth block, we want an upside-down oak wood stairs, dark oak wood stairs to be specific. And it wants to be faced like this, like it wants to face that way specifically. Then we want a dark oak wood slab, and then an upside-down dark oak wood stairs opposite facing so it wants to look like this and you'll note that the table that we've just created is actually in line with the uh, the little book stands that we have and then we want to take each end of the table and we kind of want to extend it coming towards the it's difficult to explain so an easy way to do this is you want to extend each end of the table coming over to the right by three slabs so i've already done one side but one two three then you want to stick upside down dark oak wood stairs on the ends of the table and then dark oak wood slabs in between so you just want to like i said it's one two three and then dark oak wood stairs upside down ones on the ends of the table leave a gap of one between this table and then make another table so leave a gap of one and then make this table so we have uh, an upside down dark oak wood stairs and then obviously we need another upside down dark oak wood stairs and then we want to extend the table over by three that's one two and three and then we just want to place the upside down dark oak wood stairs on the ends of the table so we want to have something which should look a little bit like that so we now have two tables and that is exactly what we're after we will put stuff on that table or both of the tables in a little while so between the 
space that we have here between the tables and all of the books and everything the space between there and this back wall we want to have ourselves some clothes some mannequins so this is going to be made out of armor stands the armor stands come out as far as the tables and they are like one space apart so you can kind of arrange these however you like um i'm going to have yeah i'm going to have a row of four here like this each spaced individually one block apart and then i'm going to have another row of them one row behind and i'm going to have another row behind them as well and i should have enough room for just another row so we have four rows of four that is 16 mannequins in total i guess we have quite a large selection of clothes at this particular supermarket and something that i will do later i I, I guess I'm going to have to outfit them with clothes, which actually takes a really long time, but I get, well, we've got to do it, haven't we? We've got to do it, but that is the left-hand side of your supermarket complete now, isn't it? So, once you've got that taken care of, the next thing that we're going to do is, you know what, I think that what, what we're going to do is we are going to actually place the aisles and stuff, and the shelves, and all of the big things, so let me show you how this is going to work. We're going to begin with by using our spruce wood planks, that's what we'll use mainly, and we want to start where we have this first table that we placed, we want to come to this inner end corner of the table. You guys can see what I'm talking about, I'm, I'm like on top of it now. Going right of this, across to the right hand side of the store, we want to leave a gap of three in the floor, that's one, two, and three in the floor, and then going right, we want to have a row of seven spruce wood planks, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then leave a gap of three on the ground, that'll be one, two, and three, and then continue going right with a row of seven. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that should leave a row of two between the uh, between the end of the shop and the end of the aisle. So now we have two rows of seven spruce wood planks. We then want to, leaving a gap of five between these two rows that we have and coming towards the back of the shop, we want to have two parallel rows. So um, from this first row that we've made, we want to leave a gap of five in the ground. That's one, two, three, four, five. So on top of the sixth block, we want to do another row of seven. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So as you can see, it's in the exact same position as this first one, except it is five rows away. And we want the same from this second row of seven as well. So we just want to count out to the sixth row again. And we want to have another row of seven, which I've just done silently in my head, but it's really easy to do. You just leave a gap of five and then duplicate the row to mark out where each one of those aisles are going to be. Then, on top of these, add another row of spruce wood planks. So just add another row of spruce wood planks directly on top of these. So you want to have two rows of planks. Then we'll actually construct the aisles and shelves and stuff themselves. So to make the shelves and what have you, we actually need uh, quite a few things. We need like oakwood stairs, we need oakwood slabs, we need chests, we need item frames, we need oakwood fence, and not much else. So, each one of these does look the same. Each one of these does look the same. So, uh, to make them, we're going to need to, starting on the left here, in front of this bottom left spruce wood plank, we want to do an upside down oakwood stair, then right of that a chest, then we want a spruce wood plank, then a chest, then a spruce wood plank, then a chest, then an upside down oak wood stairs. Then on top of these stairs and on top of the planks, we want to stack oak wood fence. And then on top of the fence, we want to do a layer of oak wood slabs. And we also want oak wood slabs on the ends of the actual like on the actual ends of the shelves and then we kind of just want to extend these slabs over to the opposite side connect things together and then duplicate what we have on the opposite side so we want upside down fence on the ends and then we want to have the uh, slab uh, the spruce wood planks in between leaving a gap of one and we want chests wherever there's a gap plus we want item frames above the chests I'm not sure that I've already mentioned that and those will be uh, those will basically be the shelves and that will make up the aisles the aisles 
all look identical to each other. And if you want to make uh, the aisles look a little bit better, the shelves look a little bit better, maybe add some wooden trap doors in front of the spruce wood, uh, spruce wood planks, because that makes it look like extra storage. Up to you whether you do it or not. But what we've done to, we've done to these shelves, we need to do to the other shelves as well. So literally do the exact same thing to each one of these four. It's really not so hard, so I'm sure that you guys will manage to do it um, without any sort of instruction whatsoever but we are going to construct these shelves and once we've done that we're not going to customize the shelves we're, we're not really going to add um add uh what's actually being sold on the shelves we're not going to put anything in the item frames just yet we will a little bit later on but that's that's more like finer detail detail decoration that we just don't need to do now we don't we don't really have to do it just right now we want to get the main bulk of this thing done and then we can start worrying about like what's going to go in item frames and what sort of foods going to be added to uh what sort of foods going to be added to the specific areas and stuff you got I'm sure that you guys like yeah why don't we actually get the get this bit done first the harder bit and then we'll figure out like all of the decorative stuff a little bit later on but there's not that much left inside here that is essential like um we do have like a a fresh sort of counter um where you'd like order meat and stuff um, there's kind of like that deli counter like fresh area that we still got to do um, We've also got some fridges to do and we've also of course got to do the tills as well um, The place where you actually pay for all of the things that we're uh, that we're going to be stocking these shelves with but for the most part a lot of the inside of this is done so um, those are the majority of the shelves and we do just have um, these shelves to do as well We just have these to do um, we're going to place the chests in between. Um, of course, we want to place uh, our oakwood fence here on top. And we'll also do this here on the back with the upside down oakwood stairs. With the spruce wood planks and the chests in between again. Um, I keep forgetting to add the uh, the trap doors in front of these spruce wood planks. Because I, d I didn't do it originally. But I just looked at it and it was like, hey, that's, that's not a bad place to actually put them. Anywhere that you want to add a little bit more detail like that, you can feel free. It, it does nothing other than add to the whole vibe of the place. But... There you go guys, now we have a load of shelves and stuff which takes up quite a bit of space in here. Once you've got those taken care of, next thing we're going to do, do going to do is the freezers right at the back. So we'll need some block of iron, we'll need some ice and we'll need some quartz slabs for this part. Starting from the very back right hand corner here, so right in the back right hand corner, we want to find this corner block and we want to move left and we want to coming up from the ground do a row of three iron, so that's one, two, three. Then going left, we want to do a row of nine iron. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm pretty sure that's a golf club. Connect it to the ground. Add another layer of iron in front of this. Then you want to add a layer of quartz slabs somewhere in between the two um, sides of the freezers, like this. Then we want to separate the freezers equally. So that ends up looking like this. It ends up leaving like a gap of two between each individual freezer. So you can split into three parts and it ends up looking like that. Also, if you like, um, you can replace the floor of the freezer with um, like iron or quartz or some material that isn't wood because it doesn't make too much sense to have it wood. And then we're just going to place ice in front of this. Um, obviously, this isn't like you can't access these but they do look good and if you want them to look even slightly better i mean it uh, it does make it look just slightly better you can add some like buttons um just coming across these if you want and uh, it makes it just look a little bit nicer so those are the freezers on the left hand side of this leaving a gap of one so from the bottom we want to leave a gap of one and then we want to be in line with the second spruce wood plank coming out of the wall. And this is where the counter is going to be, um, like the fresh food counter or whatever you want to call it. I don't even know what to call it. And we'll grab some wooden trap doors. We'll grab like uh, quartz stairs. We need some quartz slabs for this part. We need a little bit of glass. Um, glass pane works well. White stained glass pane, that sort of stuff is what we need. Um, we'll also need some polished endensite for this part. Surprisingly, we need some oakwood fence and some item frames. And 
and we'll also need some chests and not too much else. So we want to have, starting from this, we want to have a wooden trapdoor coming out of the wall. And then from that, we want to have, it's, it's kind of difficult to place actually, but we want to have a quartz slab. Um, so I guess quartz slab there. And then from that quartz slab, we want to extend that towards us by two. So that's one and actually we'll have one and then we'll do an upside down quartz stairs. Then go left of this quartz stairs by six with your upside down quartz stairs. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, and six. You should find that this lines up perfectly with uh, your aisles, by the way. Then extend this six block backwards by two of your quartz slabs and then by one with your wooden trap doors. Okay, so this is where we're going to have our counter. So we're going to place and in sight in the corner here inside the counter then we're going to leave a gap of one and in sight gap of one and in sight then we're going to place let's say let's say quartz slabs in between the and in sight it doesn't matter what material really and then behind the and in sight we want to place chests like here then in between those chests like mm, yeah we'll use and in sight again so use and in sight in between those chests and then place oak wood fence on top of that and then place item frames in front of those oak wood fence. And what we now want to do is we just want to... We, we basically just want to place some, like, coloured wool and stuff. So just to kind of, like... I don't know, just just to fill this up a little bit. Like this is this is where you'd buy like your fresh food and stuff. So like pick some coloured wool, um, have it look nice, um, throw a nice glass pane border around it. I don't actually want to use like standard glass pane. I want to use white stained glass pane to just go all the way around it because it looks a bit nicer. And then later on we would just throw some like meat in those two signs. So just to show what uh, things are being sold, that's what we do in between those two signs. And um, if you like, I, I think that it might look a bit better if we use like cauldrons or something. I don't, I don't know why cauldrons. I am thinking cauldrons, but oh no, no, go away, snowballs. Um, cauldrons might look good for some reason, like here and here. I don't know why. They're kind of bouncing in the cauldron. It, I don't know why. It just to me, for some reason, that makes sense. And um, that's pretty much that counter done. So once we've got that counter done, we're now going to focus on one of the last big things inside here, which is going to be um, where we actually purchase our things, like where we actually pay for things. So we're going to be doing the tills. For the tills, we need a lot of stuff. We need stone slabs for the tills. We need, uh, we need cyan hardened clay for the tills. We need ourselves pretty much every single type of quartz. So we'll grab quartz slabs and we'll grab quartz stairs because we can make everything else up from there. Um, we need ourselves some stone brick stairs for this. We also need some wooden trap doors. Plus we also need some chests. And we also need, we need a material that we don't actually have at the moment. We're going to need some pistons and therefore some block of redstone. But let's actually start working on this right now, shall we? So the tills are in line with this actual, like, with these shelves. So we'll start from where we have this right-hand shelf, where we have this upside-down oakwood stair. We want to leave a gap of three between this oakwood stair and where we're going to build these tills. So we want to leave a gap of one two and three and on top of this fourth block we want to place a stone slab then behind the stone slab we want to place two cyan hardened clay then behind that we want to have like opposite facing um quartz stairs like this to form kind of like a bucket shape then we want to going left of this uh, stone slab we want to place a chest and then behind that we want to place a quartz block then in the ground, we want to have a piston that is actually up. So we want to have a piston that is kind of like shot up like that. And on top of the quartz block, we want to have a stone brick stairs. This is supposed to be a seat for the worker. Then coming behind the seat, we want to have two quartz, uh, quartz blocks, like so. What we now want to do is coming across from this chest, we want to have an upside down quartz stairs like this. We want to have a wooden trap door, and then we want to have an opposite facing upside down quartz stairs. Then behind that quartz stairs, a chest, 
And then on the ground, we want to have a stone slab. And then we basically want to make the same thing that we have on the opposite side. So um, we want to, behind the stone slab, we want to have two cyan hardened clay. Then we want to have the two opposite facing quartz stairs. And we want to connect those quartz stairs together with a row of quartz blocks. And we also want to place a quartz block behind the other stair as well. We want to have a quartz block behind that chest with a stone brick stairs uh, on top of it facing towards the inside. Um, we want to have another chair. So that is a block of redstone with a piston on top to form another chair. And what we then want to do is we want to take out uh we need some new materials I, I don't know how how i don't know if we'll be using those again but we need like uh oak wood fence we need some item frames we definitely need chests again i regret regret getting rid of those um we also need though some uh we need some gray carpet so we're going to place gray carpet on top of the cyan stained clay and that's just to form like a conveyor belt sort of look um, we're going to place, I've just realized, like inside of here, inside of the tills, it'd be nice if there was a different kind of floor. So I'm thinking block of iron or anything else that you want like that. I'm also going to place on the ends here, on the end uh, quartz blocks, like just next to the upside on quartz stair, we're going to have item frames with, uh, with chests in them. Um, basically, these are supposed to be carrier bags, they're supposed to be storage, that's that's the idea, that's what all of the chests are about. It's basically like, that's, that's how I would imagine that you would get your stuff away if this was like a proper Minecraft supermarket. So, that's, uh, that's all we're doing in here, and um, we've actually just about... There we go. We've just about finished those tills. That's uh, that's it. That's all there is to them. And once you've done that, that is the inside of the supermarket just about complete. I mean, some things that you can do, by the way, that I, I haven't done yet is at the front here, you'll notice it's a little bit dark. You may want to add a little bit of lighting to the inside of your market. So in any way, shape or form that you want to do that, whether you want to add hanging lights, whether you want to add... Um, whether you want to add some like lights to the ceiling, that's what I'm going to do just because I it's the easiest basically. Um, whether you want hanging lights, whether you want lights hanging off the wall, whether you want lights in the ceiling like I do, it's completely up to you. But I'm just adding some, uh, some sea lanterns because I think that it looks nice and modern and futuristic to the inside of this. And I'm also going to separate them um, here and I think I'll also separate them here as well. So just either side of the entrance. Um, I just messed that up a little bit, but uh, you guys can see what I'm doing anyway. There we go. So, there we have... Oh, I've destroyed a block on the outside. Oh, that's going to drive me mad. I'll go and solve that in a bit. But, um, there we go. That's, for the most part, the inside of the supermarket. Now, we are missing a couple of things. Um, if you want to make this place look a little bit nicer, you might want to add some red carpet about the place. So... Add this wherever you have large amounts of oak wood plankage on the floor that just needs to be hidden a bit. So you might want to add some here, like opposite the tills. You might want to add a little bit, um, maybe you want to add a little bit here in between where we have the books. Maybe you want a little bit there. Um, maybe you feel as though that you want to add a little bit in between the aisles. Maybe that's where you want a bit of color. Doesn't have to be red, by the way. Maybe you want to add a little bit here between um, the fridges and... Um and between the aisles and the shelves and stuff as well. Maybe you want to add a bit there, but I, I would probably add some red carpet here, there, and everywhere. Just just a little bit of everywhere, I think. Um, just, just basically to break up the boring oak wood plank floor. So, um, anywhere that you might want to add it, just add it. Another thing, we have to stock these parts of the supermarket so where we have these empty shelves we kind of have to stock them with something like pumpkins melons um it's actually cool you can make another type of watermelon that i kind of like the look of with lime wool and red carpet and if you just grab another like you don't even need another material like if you throw melons on the shelves here on the ends and then you throw pumpkins on one and then lime wool with some red carpet on top of them Kind of looks like watermelon, or something that looks even more like watermelon is actually the inverse. I got that wrong, like red wool with lime carpet on top, so red wool, lime carpet. 
kind of looks like watermelon if you ask me maybe you didn't um on these two tables like again like melons would look good like it stacked and pumpkins would also look good just stacked in the center of the table just have something nice and colorful to add um if you want to stock um i'm not going to do this for all of them but actually, actually you can so if you if you want to um if if you just want to stock these mannequins uh you guys know how to do this. I think I just put those on, didn't I? Yeah, I did. But um, diamond armor, gold armor. If you want to give it like dyed, dyed armor, that looks good as well. Like in my original version, I basically took out all of these different types of leather armor. I grabbed some colors and I basically like, let's say that this gets normal leather, this particular mannequin. Um, like dye one, throw it on there like this then add another dye to it just to change the color of it a little bit add two layers add three layers of dye and just throw it somewhere else so it looks nice do that do that loads and loads of times you can stock all of these mannequins up with uh, with all of the various clothes that you want to um add things here like inside of these uh, in these item frames just add things like, i can't know like fish or raw rabbit or something like that's that's what you're selling um, inside of the item frames around here. I mean, it's kind of like a similar story. I mean, um, do you sell wood? Do you sell stone? Do you sell cobblestone, sandstone? I mean, that's that's what you could have in here and you could actually stock inside these chests. You could actually stock like the material that is actually on it. I think that that's actually wrong because that's supposed to be an and inside one, but you guys get the point. Um, those are just the finishing touches that you can add to the inside. I'm not going to dwell on this though. I'll, I'll stock all of this place individually off recording a little bit in the future but that's the inside just about done all detail wise why don't we talk about the outside of this build so there's a bit going on on the outside of this build we have a few things to do on the outside of this build it's mostly a car park on the outside okay so i actually just made a mistake you'll notice that the video just cut away i did just lay out the parking area and then show you how to build the parking bays, the bit in between, and all of this that you can see on the screen. But I did it a little bit wrong, and I didn't notice until I actually dug out this entire place and made it look like this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically show you how you reach this point from here, because we have just kind of warped in time. So, to get this, all you have to do is you have to dig an area of two going all the way around your supermarket. You'll notice that the stone slabs that we have here are dug around in an area of two going all the way around the market like this. What we then did is we extended this area of two once we filled this part in with stone slabs we then just have to make the car park and the car park is as big as you want it to be my personal car park is connected to a street out in front of my supermarket because i'm trying to build a city so you can have the car park as big as you want i would just suggest that it is big enough for a few bays which I'm now going to show you how to build. So the only thing that you have to do to catch up to this point right here is all you really have to do is dig an area of two going all the way around your supermarket, fill it in with stone slabs, and I'd also figure out how far down you want your car park to be. But why don't I show you how to actually make the bays before you decide how long you want the car park to be. But what I would suggest you do is right now dig out the area all the way around the supermarket, dig that out, replace it with stone slabs, and then take care of the dimensions of the car park in a second. But, pause the video if you have to, do that, and then come on to this next bit. I'm sorry that I messed up so badly, but it'd be really difficult to reverse it from here. So, to actually make the car parking base for the car park, you want to begin just left of this front bottom left hand corner quartz block that we have here so you want to begin just left of this from this block in the ground you want to come forward and you want to come forward in the ground by eight so that is one two three four five six seven eight you then want to move left by one and then on this left block you want to place a stone slab go left of that stone slab by five that's one two three four five then you want to take this fifth block and you want to extend it towards you by five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. 
then extend that fifth block to the right by five. One, two, three, four, five. And that is what one of the parking bays looks like. This is where one of the cars would be, sorted in between this bay. But what I would say is, you can now kind of choose how long you want your car park to be, because we can now take this fifth block that we extended to the right, and we can add another bay. We can extend it down by five, one, two, three, four, five, and then to the right by five again, one, two, three, four, five. So now we have a double bay. It looks like the letter E. And then we can take this fifth block again if you want it even longer and extend it down again by five. One, two, three, four, five. And then to the right by five. One, two, three, four, five. Like this. So now we have a longer shape. And this is how long I want my bays to be because now we have a decent amount of space at the top and the bottom and the sides. Um, what I'm now going to do is... Going right of this shape that I've made, I'm going to leave a gap of four in the ground. That's one, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to do a row of stone slabs that is, that is as long as the entire length of the bays. Four blocks away, like that. I'm then going to extend each one of the end blocks of this row of slabs. And I'm going to extend them to the right by five. That's one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to connect it all together and I'm going to form a rectangular shape like this. Then leaving a gap of four between this rectangular shape and the parking bay that I'm about to make, we want to leave a gap of four, one, two, three, four. And then we want to have the same thing. We want to have the same shape that we have on the opposite side. So that'll look like one, two, three, four, five, six. This time we want to have a row of six. And then we want to extend this coming all the way down. So that is equal in length to uh, what we've just made over there. And then we can take this end block and we can extend it coming towards us by one, two, three, four, five, like that. So you can see that we have the same shape as we do on the opposite side and then we just have to uh we just have to add all of the other lines in so that'll be one two three four five like this you can see that is equal to the opposite side we just want to flip that shape and make it the same one two three four five so we just want to have the same shape on the opposite side and there we have a really nice even looking car park the bays that we have on the left and the right those are for cars and this center one here is basically just it's, it's supposed to be just um, it, it's just to break up the car park, basically. I don't know why I just had so much trouble saying this. It's, I'm going to turn it into an oval, and I'm going to throw some flowers in it. Now, you might want to choose a completely different shape, and you might want to choose a completely different function, but I really wish it wasn't filled with cyan stained clay. I wish I would have kept the grass. And uh, this is where I'm going to be placing some flowers. I'm going to be placing some blue orchids in here. Um, I think, can I place hedge it? Oh, I can just place hedge directly on top of it. I'm going to place hedge all the way in the middle. And I'm going to place orchids, which I definitely can't place on cyan stained clay. And I'm going to place orchids going all the way around it. And this is just a nice part of, uh, this is just a nice part of the car park to try, kind of just split up the parking spaces to have something nice looking in them. And there's, there's nothing more to it than that. And we just have nice blue orchids going all the way around. So you can see that it's actually beneficial to build this part. So, like, decide how far you want your car park to come down. It's beneficial to build this part and then, like, knock out all of the other blocks of the car park and connect it to your street or connect it to wherever. It's, it's good to do that and then it's, it's better to, like, first lay it out, then actually knock things out and place iron stained clay in there. But there you go. That's what we have. And I'm sorry that it had to be this way around. I'm sorry that, like, I did it before telling you guys about it, but that's because of I, I kind of messed up the tutorial. I really do apologize. I honestly do. But there you go, guys. Now, once you've got that taken care of for yourself, and I understand that it's going to take a really long time to reach this point for you. Once you've got the bays knocked out, you're going to then have to knock out the ground and you're going to have to add in your cyan stained clay. And I would recommend that you also build a quartz border going around it as well, just to make it look a little bit nicer. So I understand that that will take a really, really long time. And I suggest that you pause this video. And once you've got that taken care of, you can then come back to this next part. But what we're now going to do is we are going to add some shopping trolleys out in front of the supermarket. These shopping trolleys are really easy to make and they can be placed anywhere that you like. I'm going to be placing them right about here. I'm not even putting them in a specific place like right here. They're made of cauldrons with oak fence gates opened behind them with item frames placed all around and that is basically just a nice little makeshift shopping cart. 
And then behind that, I'm going to leave a gap of one, and I'm going to place another one. That's just a cauldron with uh, oak wood fence gates open behind them. And I, I think that that's just about it. That's We just have those two there. And then we're going to have another row of them. I'm going to have leave a gap of two on the right, and I'm just going to have another row of the shopping carts. I think that they look like pretty decent um, pretty decent shopping carts. I, uh, I really, really like how they look. And if you like, you can place like uh, iron and bars around them. So they're kind of like officially actually you know what they would have been better off if uh i really don't want the iron bars to connect to the wall mm. will the iron bars connect to the cauldrons no they won't actually so we can uh, we can place it just going all the way around the cauldron just on the sides here i didn't realize that they wouldn't connect to the cauldrons, so that's actually kind of a good thing i'm quite happy about that um, i'm just gonna have to repair the floor and uh there we have we just have an area that we can grab our shopping trolleys and stuff and and that's just out in front of the build that can be closer that can be further away i'm actually going to move that row of iron um, just here in front um, since it's not gripping on to anything which is actually a good thing and because I don't want it coming out any further than the supermarket but that's that's it guys um, those are your shopping carts place those somewhere on the right hand side or the left or both and um, that is the entire outside of your supermarket done it looks really good i really wish that i could have tutorialed it properly but like i said it would have taken so long to reverse what i'd already done that it, it, it no there was no way that was happening plus i think it's easy enough to understand what you have to do um despite the fact that the floor has changed a little bit why don't we actually take a look at the inside of this place and uh, have a bit of a look at it on foot because I have done a couple of things whilst I've been away as well. So this is obviously the outside. This is where I would place cars like here, here, here. We have enough room for six cars to be parked. And uh, maybe I'll even build a lorry at some point as well. We have our shopping cart so we'd theoretically grab one of these and we'd head inside. We'd walk into the little lobby first, wipe our feet, come in here and there's just a whole host of things for us to buy on the left we have some book stands that we can grab a magazine off we have some more novels here we have some proper books and we can grab ourselves some fresh groceries we can grab some melons or some pumpkins and we can go shopping for new clothes we have loads of different colors here loads of options we can even grab some fresh meat if we want from this point here and um, we have a couple of freezers here as well in the back corner um, if we need some materials we can grab ourselves some oak wood blanks some we can grab ourselves some andensite we can grab a bow we can grab some compasses and we have have all sorts of things that we can grab from these shelves and we also have a place to pay as well theoretically we'd have some villagers or somebody working behind the tills and we'd scan our shopping through here and we'd load it up into some chests and we'd carry it off away through our supermarket so it's actually i think a really good representation of a supermarket i think that the outside looks really really good as well and i hope that you guys like it too again just to apologize once again guys because i do feel kind of bad about it i'm sorry that i couldn't show you um, like the process of adding the stone to the ground and adding all of the polished um, adding all of the cyan stained clay to the ground because I just I, I messed it up I did I messed up the tutorial I'm really really sorry about it but I hope you still managed to make it I hope you like this build and if you do please give this video a like Give it a favorite, give it a share. I'd really appreciate it. I honestly will comment down below. What else do you want to see me make next? Very, very interested, especially real life builds. I know you guys want to see an airport, but what, what other than an airport do you want to see? Very, very intrigued to know. Um, also, follow me on Twitter, at TSMC360. I post some builds that I've been working on there. I take requests. I like to see what you guys make. If you do make the supermarket, and if you do make it in your own unique way, then show me on Twitter. I would absolutely love to see it. I genuinely would. Um, also, check out the cards. Check out the description below. The only things I'm going to be leaving in there are my real-world building playlist. And I'm also going to be leaving the actual Tesco's build that we have in front of us as well. Or our supermarket build, however you want to call it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.